Hello everyone. Recently I released a blog post covering how to deploy Red Hat OpenShift with Selenium into a VMware vSphere environment. And I thought it'd also be really good to actually take you through that in some video content as well. So you can view that blog post on our isvalent.com uh, blogs site itself. Um, and basically, I take you step by step through how to deploy uh, OpenShift with Cilium as well. Um, in terms of just covering off maybe some of the fundamentals of that before we dive into it. So one of the questions I always get asked is, who supports me when I use Cilium with OpenShift rather than the out-the-box CNI from Red Hat? And the answer is very simple. So Red Hat will support you with that because Cilium is a, uh, has achieved the Red Hat OpenShift Container Network Interface Certification. And that's by completing the operator certification and passing the end-to-end -end testing that Red Hat puts in place for those things. So we're all good from that point of view. Um, and then if there are any issues when you're running this in a production environment, Red Hat will collaborate with the ecosystem provider to help troubleshoot the, uh, the issues and efforts as well. And that's actually documented on their third-party uh, software support statement as well. Um, so for those of you that have chosen uh, Icefield Enterprise Facilium, you get a support complete supporter experience from both vendors, Red Hat and Isovalent, when using Obershift and Cilium together. together. So that's fantastic. Um, so how do we uh, install Cilium on OpenShift? Well, first and foremost, there's actually a couple of methods to install that. So the first one, which is typically most common and is the one that Red Hat prefer you to use nowadays, is what's called the install provisioned infrastructure. So that means the installation deploys cluster, uh, provisions the infrastructure that's needed for that as necessary and manages that for you as well. And the cluster actually has the ability to manage that infrastructure as well. Can go down the use provision infrastructure route, also known as UPI. That means that you deploy the cluster onto infrastructure that is prepared and maintained outside of that deployment. So again, if you need to scale nodes, add nodes, you would deploy them, bootstrap them, add them into the cluster yourself rather than go into the cluster and, for example, scaling that machine set automatically for you. And then there's a third method which is available, which is becoming more popular as well, which is called agent-based, and that provides you the flexibility of UPI. is driven by something called the assisted installer tool, um, and essentially that's predominantly run using Red Hat's cloud console. So you create a cluster concept to the cloud console and you get like a live boot CD. Um, and you basically boot up your virtual machine or your bare metal machine. Um, it connects to the internet and will bootstrap from that point of view as well. So that's kind of a really cool way to go through that. There's a couple of prerequisites just to run you through. Uh, so first and foremost, you need to download the OpenShift install tool and the OC tool from the Red Hat repository. You can either do that through the cloud console of Red Hats, or you can go directly to the Red Hat repository as well. And I've given links to both of that in the blog post. You can choose your version there. Um, if we go further down um, to here, you can actually choose from latest or stable as well. So I actually was doing this using the stable build of 4.13 in my environment. You will need something called a pull secret file or key. Um, you get that from the Cloud Console website. Um, you can get that as well as for a trial activation, as well as for those of you that are paying for Red Hat today, as well as if you want to test this, you can do it for 60 days. We're going to need a DNS server which supports the infrastructure that's uh, available and an SH key as well, so we can access the OpenShift nodes directly if we need to troubleshoot for them as well. Um, because I'm deploying into a VMware environment today, one of the things that we will need to do for the tooling to work, and this is documented again in the official Red Hat documents, is the OpenShift uh, install tool will need you to have the uh, certificates from the vCenter downloaded and installed locally in the location, um, depending on which jump host you're using to bootstrap the cluster from as well. Uh, so this is my location in my Ubuntu machine. From a DNS perspective, we need to create two DNS uh, host A records and reverse DNS records um, for a cluster in an API installation. So the first one is going to be uh, API dot whatever your cluster name is dot the base domain as well. And then the second one is going to be a wildcard address uh, at the subdomain of apps, subdomain of your cluster name, subdomain of base name. 
So in this tutorial, we're going to be using isovalent.rocks. Our cluster name is going to be OCP 4.13 to make it really easy to identify. So a full example of that would be we need to create a host A and reverse lookup record for API.OCP413.isovalent.rocks. Um, and that needs to be fully resolvable inside of our DNS as well from that point of view. Um, these uh, IP addresses need to be part of the DHCP scope that the uh, virtual machines are brought up into. Um, but exclude, excluded from the DHCP scope as well. So I think in my environment, I'm using something like 192.168.200.04/24 as a subnet. So that's where my uh, record's going to be created. Okay, so let's start to dive in. So first and foremost, I'm going to make sure that my two uh, DNS records uh, are available. So you can see here, I've done my API address and we get uh, 200.142 here. And then I'm just doing anything. So we're going to use wildcards. We could just do something.apps. Uh, and again, that's going to go to 143. So essentially, this is everything used by the uh, the ingress routes of OpenShift out box because I'm not going to replace that today. And um, this is the actual Kubernetes API hosted by OpenShift. So to get started i'm just going to clear my screen there i'm going to run openshift hyphen install create install config and this is actually going to give you a really nice and easy wizard so that you can create a configuration for you and essentially you can go through you can select which environment you're on you type in all of your details and that's going to output at what's called an install hyphen config.yaml file for you um, and that's really important because that's all of your environment details for the platform that you're going to deploy OpenShift onto as well so um, I am going to just cancel out of that we can see there it's failed to generate this which is perfectly fine I'm going to clear yeah. this here and what I'm actually going to do is show you a existing install.config.yaml file that I've cleaned up so I've removed my passwords from it and my pull secret so if I write uh, less here, so essentially this is what you're going to get as an output. You can see things are set, for example, like my base domain here. Um, the compute and control plane um, details will be set automatically for you, but you can go in and edit that um, as per the uh, platform provider that you're provisioning to as well. So if because it, it's a vSphere environment, I could set the amount of CPU and RAM added to these machines as well. Um, but of course, you've got to also think about the minimum requirements for that cluster when you bring it up. You can see my cluster name here. We can see that we've got um, the networking set. Now, what's most important here is that we will need to edit this install config file to change the network type from OpenShift SDN, which is the default out of the box CNI, to Cilium. And that needs to be with a capital C as well. And then again, you need to ensure that these uh, IP address ranges here work for the network that you're deploying onto as well. And then if we go a bit further down, we can see uh, the platform details as well. So we can see that API address that I've set up there. We can see the ingress address. The rest of this essentially is just details about how it's going to deploy that into my vCenter environment for VMware. Um, we've got the username and passwords down here as well. So this will be in clear text for those that are security conscience. And then finally, we're going to have um, the pull secret that you would copy in and the SH key. So again, a lot of this is generated for you if you're using the create install hyphen config command, um, or you may want to generate this yourself if you've used and operated OpenShift in the past as well. So like all good demos, I already have one um, created. So I'm just going to copy that file uh, straight away. So I've got it available. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create the OpenShift manifest. And this is a really important step. If we don't do this and we just go ahead and run the create cluster command, we're going to generate a cluster that won't come up from provision because we don't have everything in place at the moment um, ready for our OpenShift environment to work with Cilium. So we're going to generate this by running this command here. So it's the OpenShift hyphen install tool, create a manifest. And now what we're going to see is that we have a manifests folder available. 
And there's already um, essentially all of the cluster config about how it's going to build and generate that cluster for us. So we could actually go in there and change that as well. So maybe if we miss something in our install config file, we could also edit it here. Um, but again, there's going to be a lot more detail there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the uh, Cilium uh, OpenShift uh, Lifecycle Manager files from the Isovalent GitHub repository. So first, I'm going to set my, uh, set my Cilium version that I want to install in this cluster. I'm also going to set a temporary uh, directory to uh, download these files into as well. Next, I'm going to clone that, and I'm going to send it into that Git directory as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a command. And again, I've put all of these commands into the blog post for you. Um, but this command here essentially is going to get the Cilium version of the manifest, because basically we're going to have a manifest for every Cilium version that's available. I'm going to copy it into our manifests folder. Um, if I clear this, um, and now I'm just going to test or remove and clean up that temporary folder. And I'll clear that again. And now what we want to do is we want to check that our Cilium files are in there. So now we'll just look into that manifest folder for anything with Cilium in the name here. We can see that we've copied across all these. This is going to create our CRDs inside the environment, the namespace, the service accounts, the deployments, the cluster roles, the, uh, everything that's needed to bring up Cilium inside of our environment. And then most important, there is that last file as well. So for those of you that have used Cilium in the past, you'll know that you need to provide uh, Helm values, for example, or values to the Cilium install command file um, to configure the various features. In an OpenShift environment, you would do that by editing this file here. So um, oh, my command there. So we're just going to do less manifest. And then dun, 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 we'll copy and paste that. We can see here, I've got a very simple file with the configurations in. So for example, we're not enabling Hubble in this environment, but if I wanted to enable it, I could just add in that line there to say enabled, colon, and then true inside of my environment. But that's it. That's the really simple install in terms of getting OpenShift off and running. So now I am going to run the command to create my cluster. Now I'm just running this with the normal um, uh, instance is just going to give me informational output into my terminal window, but you can also edit that with uh, hyphen, hyphen, log, hyphen, level equals, and then uh, which level of information you want. Uh, typically, it's going to be debug as well. So this is going to take about 30 minutes or so to bring up my environment. So we're just going to speed up through that as we go on. Okay, so now we can see after some time that my cluster is up and running. Um, and I've been told by the OpenShift install tool how to get access to it. So it's going to run this command here, which loads the cube config file for me. And now if I do uh, cube CTL get nodes, I'm going to see that all my nodes are up, running, and ready, which is fantastic. So it also means that the CNI is operational. Um, with OpenShift, you also get something called the OpenShift client, which is the OC tool. So I could also do OC get nodes, for example. Uh, OC is a, a combination of kubectl, uh, cube ADM, and uh, some OpenShift specific uh, commands uh, rolled in to one. So now we've got all of that up and running. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run the Cilium tests as well. Um, to do that, because there is something called the security constraints context in OpenShift out of the box, which provides a, a higher level baseline of security inside the environment, we do need to add some additional configuration for that. So this is documented in the Isovalen uh, GitHub page that I, that I copied from before. And again, it's in our blog post. But essentially, I'm going to create a security context constraint um, that allows us to uh, run with the appropriate privileges for our network tests to run. So we'll create that. We're going to create our namespace of Cilium test. And then really simply, I'm going to uh, apply this uh, 
test in place. You can see there's a number of tests that are there. And then essentially, we're just going to wait a couple of minutes and then we're going to check on those pods. If those pods are up and running, it means that we've been successful and everything's working. Um, if it's not up and running, then there's there's an issue we need to look into. So actually, if I do watch uh, N2 and then do this command here, so we're going to watch all pods in that namespace. There you go. So fantastic. We can already see they're all up and running, meaning that all tests are successful. And that wraps us for today with our installation of Red Hat Upshift with Cilium. Hopefully you can see it's really quick, simple and easy to get started and up and running out of the box, which is fantastic. That's what you want when you're kind of looking to replace the default CNI with something that's more feature rich uh, like Cilium is. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye now.